Yeah, but they... Wellington hasn't lost a game all year. Mm. Corbini have finished second. Corbini is the one going to their seventh straight. So Corbini has been probably the most famous integrated side. And now they're just coming straight up to the... Uh,
Good afternoon and welcome to Perth Footy Live, proudly brought to you by our broadcast partner, Carlton Dry, the official beer of WA Amateur Football, celebrating 100 years of Perth Football League all season long. CUB have been the exclusive partner of the Perth Football League for over 20 years and we thank them for their ongoing support. Today we are broadcasting from John Dunn Memorial Park for the integrated grand final as Williston take on Coolbinia. And now, please welcome your commentary team. And that lovers of footy everywhere. This is uh, Perth Footy Live. We're proudly brought to you by Carlton Dry. Of course, CUB has been uh, supporting the Perth Football League for over 20 years now. Um, but Perth Football Live is a show that likes to stream to you a local game every week on your Facebook page. We are all about showcasing a club and its exceptionally wonderful people. Um, but this match, we're doing something a little bit special. We are actually covering the integrated grand final between Six Pete, Six Pete Club, Kulbinia, and rising contenders, and in fact, undefeated contenders, uh, Williton. Now, the commentary is probably going to work a little differently today because pretty much you're stuck with me, Scully, and if anyone has tuned in before, you'll basically know that while I love football, I don't really know a great deal about it. Um, so that's what you're contending with today. And I've also got Blowing Joe uh, for special comments from the Perth Football League. Uh, we will be covering the game a little bit. We'll be doing our interviews as always. We'll be calling out any specky moments out there on the field and also just giving you a little bit of time to enjoy the game um, uninterrupted. Um, now, I do have to let you all know we love it when you interact with us on the Facebook page so please jump online, let us know where you're tuning in from. Actually, even better than that, if you know anyone down here and you want to grab a free coffee voucher, send them our way. We've got these free coffee vouchers um, from Macca's ready to go. Um, but jump on the Facebook page, let us know where you're tuning in from, let us know uh, how you see the game going. Huge, give a huge shout out to people, the special people out there that you know playing today and we'll pass on those comments. Um, so yeah, we love for you guys to interact with us and uh, most importantly on a wonderful occasion like today with the Integrated Grand Final. Now, let me introduce you to Joe. Joe, you're from uh, the Perth Football League, and what do you do over at Perth Football League? Yeah, my role's around partnerships and sponsorship and things like that, so the Perth Footy League, we've got a great network of players and clubs and even the integrated competition, mm -hmm. and, and my role's really to help try to awesome. commercialise that, so oh, that's fantastic great. Okay, so you obviously have had a few cut and dry in your time if you've helped to commercialise yes. that aspect of partnerships. It is, um. it is one of the more challenging aspects <laughs> yeah. of the role. Um, so can you give us an overview of uh, the game today and how we found these two teams found themselves in the grand final? Oh, we couldn't ask for a better build-up, could we? Oh, so we've okay. got... The best ever integrated team in Kulbinia versus, versus a team that's gone through the whole season undefeated. And, and there was some massive controversy in the finals leading mm -hmm. up to this. So it's going to be on for young and old. Um, yep. And it's going to be one of the best. I think it's going to be one of the best integrated grand finals Absolutely. we've seen. Absolutely, yeah. So two teams, one going for their seventh premiership, uh, but they are, of course, versing the team that has gone undefeated all season and actually has thoroughly thrashed them, I think, in a few rounds. Um, what was it? When did they meet earlier in the season? Round... We have it down here. Uh, we have it down here, yeah. Yeah, so round one... Woo! Is that the siren? We'll just uh, pause that for a moment. Here we go. And it's tapped out by the big boy in red and blue. All right, so sorry. Tell us about how, how uh, the teams performed in those earlier yeah, games. Yeah, uh, 
definitely Wilton got them a couple of times in the regular season, but in the final itself, it was a one-point game. So oh, wow. very tight. Uh, so I, I'm expecting Kulbinia to really put the heat on them early today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's how we got here, and the game's underway, and it already looks like we've got a, a charging team. Got on goal. Woo! Here we go. Looks like Aaron Richards there. Big snap First on the right nailed. Straight through the middle, and uh, that's a fantastic start for Willerton. They're really fired up. That is fabulous. Well done. Just want to introduce, mm. sitting next to me, a very yep. special man, the general manager of the Perth Footy League, David Armstrong. So thanks, thanks, Dave. Great to have you here with us. Well, yep, it's another beautiful day at the start of the finals series for the Perth Footy League. So this is number two. We've just had the, the B Division Grand Final for Integrated Footy. And, and then after today, we've got another 28 Grand Finals to go. So we're just warming up. <laughs> tell, tell, us about, <laughs> tell us about the first Grand Final of the day, Dave. It was Kingsway versus yeah. Curtin Uni. How did that one go? Well, it got down, I think it was only goal with Curtin Uni Wesley getting up in their first year uh, this year. Um, also this year, we introduced the B Division. So... Um, uh, you know, with with all the other grades of footy that we have, there's a league and reserve. So this year we introduced an A division and a B division. So um, I guess that I guess that's telling us that integrated footy just keeps growing and growing. Is that right, Dave? It, it does. It does. We're up to uh, uh, 11 teams now, which is fantastic. And as I said, the A and B division concept allows. Oh, nice mark from that young man out there. Sorry, Dave. So it certainly allows um, players to strive for a premiership and. You would have seen the smiles on the faces of Curtin Uni Wesley plays. Uh, they've won a premiership medal, and that's fantastic. So, um, and now we've got the A division uh, with you know, the two powerhouses really now with integrated footy in, in Kilbinia and Wellington. Uh, Kilbinia, a really um, star-studded team. Uh, they have they have some all Australian players in there with David Hallows uh, and Lindsay Ashworth. Um, Wellington again got some really good players too, but uh, you know it's going to come down to making the, boat, the, the most of those opportunities. And there's no difference to any game, game of footy, and that is that, that scoreboard pressure. Absolutely. Now, Dave, sorry, that name just rang a bell with me, David Hallows. Yep. I happened to um, bump into Dave, David's dad. Yep. And I didn't realise that David was an All-Australian, but Dad was saying to me that his son's out there playing yep. and um, expect him to challenge for BOG today. Yeah, look, David Hellows is the big ruckman. He's been an All-Australian twice at the uh, AFL Inclusions Carnival. Um, and he is, as I said, he's the big center, uh, big ruckman. Uh, he, he, he can change a game pretty pretty easily. Yeah. Oh, wow. I have noticed he's got a big well, body a, and he doesn't mind using it. And he's he? got a proud dad out there and he doesn't mind saying. Yeah, he's probably had his litre of chalk milk before he got into the game. That's one of his rituals. <laughs> <laughs> There's Don't a guy for Willardon, Tyson... Worthington, he, he's uh, impressed me with a couple of marks and some great play early yeah. as well. So, so, so Tyson, again, uh, at the last AFL Inclusion Carnival a couple of years ago, uh, along with Lindsay and David, was also named an All-Australian. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, he's a quality quality player. It's been tapped down to, to Willerton in their forward half. Ooh. Oh, they're looking very dangerous. So, a bit, bit of a dangerous time of the game for Coolbinia. They've got to, got to get the ball back into their, their forward half. Now, David, how long are the quarters... In the integrated. Integrated is for uh, four fifteen. Four okay, four times fifteen 15. minute quarters. All yeah. right, great. So yeah, you're definitely right then, Joe. In that, um, with those fifteen minute quarters, uh, you can't really afford to lose five minutes of the f very first um, quarter all up one end of the ground, all up um, Willardon's way. The ball's just, holding the ball's just been played against Wayne Accor. He's been very active in that forward half for Willardon so far. Excellent. So, Dave, um, it's a pretty special year for Perth Football League, being 100 years. Um, and obviously the uh, competition has uh, expanded considerably, considerably over that time. It has become far more inclusive. That's in terms of the integrated uh, competition and the women's competition. But talk to me about your 100-year um, celebrations. Well, I'm glad we only comes around every 100 years. I can tell you that. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been a mammoth, a mammoth year in um, events and activities that we've done. Um, you know, probably the latest, uh, we, we had a business network lunch to, to recognise all our sponsors through, mm -hmm. through the club levels just a couple of weeks ago at Crown. There was a couple of people there. 
Um, is that what you watching off that beautiful painting by yeah. Kev Kevin Binders? Kevin Binders uh, did a magnificent painting to commemorate 100 years. Kevin is a um, well-known Indigenous artist. He, he played for Nolamara and, uh, and Maddington, so he's an amateur footballer through and through. Uh, from that network lunch, we actually raised $7,000 for that painting, which is going to the AFL um, Inclusion Carnival team. Oh, um, so that's going to help these guys um, uh, get, get across to Adelaide. So that's been really good. Um, you know, way back when we started round one, the Commemorative Magazine in the West Australian mm -hmm. um, has been fantastic. We just launched the virtual history, um, and that is, that'll be a work in progress. It's, it's a mammoth amount of information, and even now we're getting so much information from people with premiership photos saying, from 1970, saying, here's this 1970 premiership photo that you don't have. Mm. So that'll keep building. Um, but when you say virtual, you mean online, so people can access that archive yeah. online? Yep. Oh, yep. that's brilliant, through the Perth Football League page? Yep, so you go to the Perth Football League and you look at the history tab and that takes you to our virtual history. Wow. Uh, and we'll try to capture... That's going to stir up some memories for people. Well, it has. Wonderful. In fact, one of the, one of the things we do have is... Um, uh, pretty much for those that do remember, uh, Westside Footy. So during the mid 80s and early 90s, mm. Westside Footy was the number one, what well, was the only footy magazine that we had. Oh, uh, what? newspaper. So I thought you were talking about a team. No, no, Westside Footy. Newspaper. Okay. newspaper. Newspaper. And so we've got 16 years, it went for 16 years, we've got pretty much every edition. Every edition scanned. Because uh, in the Westside Football, not only did it cover the Waffle, it also covered the Amateurs and Country Footy League. Um, and that certainly got a lot of interest from people who are saying to read back through those pages of all the old names and, and legends of footy uh, from those, those sort of mid-80s. That is on. a huge undertaking, but also what a wonderful archive to have available to people. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So it's and it, I guess it takes a 100-year celebration to find the ability to resource that yeah. special project. So, so Brad Willey... Um, did that task for us and he had it sort of stored for, for quite a few years and now he said look here it is mm. um, another one that we've on the website is uh, Paul Giamov um, is involved with the Sterling Footy Club Paul put together pretty much every metropolitan senior footy team so that's about 300 uh, clubs um, that are listed on the website now showing when they were established um, you know it, it, like, like, now, oh, like a club biography pretty much when they were established, uh, if they merged, if they changed their name, what their colours were, um, even what competition they played in because, you know... Back There's in the been early, different iterations yeah, of... Yeah, early 60s, 70s, um, um, there was the, you know, the Sunday Football League, uh, the South Suburban Murray League, the uh, Fremantle Ex-Scholars Association oh. competition. So there were six or seven competitions that were actually happening in the Perth metro area uh, over the time. Now there's the Perth Footy League and there's also the Metro Footy League, which is a small competition on Sunday. Um, but over time, all these 300 teams. Yeah. So we've got that um, categorised now. There's a crumb in the forward line, guys. Oh, like a goal what's here. happened? Oh. Oh, the post. Ashley North has a snap on goal, hits the post. Great opportunity goes missing. We have got the Willerton girls team sitting right next to us, so <laughs> if, you, if the listeners at home hear the screaming girls, that's they the They are parochial, team. and don't we love it? They want to scalp early. Um, so, well, actually, just really quickly then, Joe, what have you been seeing happening out there? What's happened in the last few minutes? Oh, look, I definitely think Willerton's on top. Uh, Coolbini is struggling to get it past their half-forward line, so uh, Willerton's on top. They do need to kick a few goals whilst they've got the ascendancy. So, well done to Coolbini for holding them to a, just a six or seven point uh, lead at this stage. So, not making the most of their, of their dominance Lindsay in the forward Lindsay line. Lindsay Ashworth's been active. He's getting around it. They've dropped David Hallows behind the ball. Oh, here we go. Beautiful pick-up, bounce and delivery. That's actually beautifully centred. Oh, Liam oh. Arbuck, who has done a few good things in the last couple of minutes, number goes, seven Jeff there Stewart, too. Jeff Stewart, state player, number 15 for Willington. Looks like a guy. Oh, get out. Percent. No. Oh. Oh. Jeez, I that hope was this my man, Tyson Worthington. Mm. He has had a stack of the pill so far. So there you go. There's that scoreboard pressure we're talking mm. about. Yeah, but, you know, as we know, it uh, these points can sometimes make all the difference at the end of the game, so let's hope this doesn't come back to bite him in the bum. There goes Dave Hallows. Ah! That's he's a booming, he's a booming kick, and just Dave as I Hallows. say that, he gets smothered. So there you go. Commentator's curse. <laughs> this is this Lindsay. is Lindsay. He's a bit of a 
a gun of this competition. Handball oh, backwards. Oh, lovely, smart little tap oh, around him then. Tyson. Plenty of time. Here goes Jeff Short for Wollaton, number 15. Oh, he's, oh, he sockers oh, it. Oh, another point. Geez, they're hungry for the ball, though. They are going second, third efforts at the moment. I mean, let's. who knows how long um, Kulbinia can actually stand up to that kind of pressure. It is going to be wearing on them at some point. Yeah, it's two goals two, or is it two goals three up oh. on the life without barriers scoreboard. And how good is it looking up onto those Kelmscott hills? Oh, my word. Driving <laughs> out to Kelmscott. Beautiful. Yeah, driving, I should say, into Kelmscott, <laughs> seeing those hills in the distance. Really is a lovely part of the um, outer suburbs of Perth. Oh, Tyson's got it. Woo! Oh, another oh, point. Another oh. point. <laughs> Now, what are Corbinia going to need to do here to get this out of their 50? Because certainly Williton are um, impressively locking that ball into their 50. Yeah, they've certainly got a bit more composure at this stage. So they just need to a bit of, bit of chipping the ball around. Mark, kick, mark, kick. Oh, here that, we go. They've, they've got, got it one out. one out wide here. That's Lindsay. It touches the ball to ground, kicks it up to the wing. Nice Boy Duffield, gathered. nice lead, snaps into the centre of the ground. He's got a Finds free a teammate. Options. Wilton's uh, gone to sleep a bit here. Oh, dropped it, but still at it, hey? Still fighting for it. And what are we calling here? It's uh, holding the ball. Tyler Gould, the captain. That's he unlucky, but love to see that more aggressive attacking play then from yeah. Kulbinia. Nice left foot kick up to the wing. So, Dave, anything else with the 100, 100 years? I know there was a special football. We've obviously got the Carlton Dry. Um, Remember the can? Yep. Uh, as I said, we've got, uh, you said on, the, on today's grand final program, so mm. as we head to grand finals, there will be a commemorative grand final program. It's featuring all the uh, club mascots of 2021 on the front. Uh, so as people start to go to the grand finals over the next few weeks, uh, they'll be able to pick up the commemorative magazine, uh, grand final magazine. So, and then we have a middle presentation dinner at Crown once again. Uh, we're expecting just under a thousand people to go to that that event. Uh, Geez, we're lucky in WA, aren't we? We are very lucky. I know the Victorian amateurs have um, they've closed down the season at, at this stage, and they they don't expect to be playing finals again. And we were meant to be having, uh, well, I mean, I'm assuming we still are having uh, Masters footy in WA. Some but great dash off the back line there from Trent Fleming. Yeah, Kicks yeah. it into the middle. Two on one there for Willerton. They should get this. Oh, still at it. Sorry, Dave. Well done. The AFL Masters, yeah, they're, they're still uh, due to play uh, beginning of October. Uh, the AFL Masters Carnival. Mm. Um, but might be uh, obviously going to be reduced teams. I think it will be reduced teams because the quarantine element comes into a, to effect this weekend, isn't it? And, uh, and the range has started to fall out there. So I absolutely can understand you saying that, you know, uh, you all nearly gather, uh, got it then. Um, I absolutely understand you saying, thankfully, that it only comes around once every 100 years because a huge amount of work has gone into really commemorating... Um, the importance of uh, grassroots footy, community footy. Yeah, and as I said, the, the, the virtual history is probably the, the cornerstone of that. As I said, it's going to be one of those things that continues... Soccer off the... Oh! Oh! That, if that's not goal of the day... <laughs> well done, mate. Oh, they're loving it here. Hear those girls. Caleb Heron makes something from nothing there. That ball was going out. He just kicked it off the ground with his right foot and his teammate just watched it go through. How good was Mate, that? Mate, he's pretty tall. He's not going to get down to gather that one. So it'll, uh, a good thing he's got a great soccer on him. And uh, with, the, with the rain coming down, uh, those goals, each goal's worth two or three goals in this sort of condition. Yeah, how so is that going to change the situation now? Because that is looking like a huge lead at the moment when you take into account um, the rain that is going to start to, uh, I guess, muddy up that ground. Yeah. Make that ground a bit more thick underfoot. The cra yeah, the, the, uh, the clouds were certainly... Clouds everywhere. Bit of drizzle, bit of rain, a bit uncomfortable. Um, but, yeah, Kulbini is going to have to dig deep now. I'm not sure why the umpire's holding this up. Now they've got to get their 666 right. 
Oh, and, and there's the siren. Thank you so much, Dave, for joining us. Um, we've really appreciated your time um, sharing everything that uh, the, the Perth Football League has put um, a lot of resourcing into celebrating the uh, 100 years. Um, anything else that you want to get across to our listeners before you head off? or? I think we've covered Yeah, most pretty of much it. covered everything. Through the, through we'll the focus on the game a bit now. Why don't, why don't, we'll Dave, why don't, Dave, why don't Dave you tell us there's probably probably a couple of hundred kids watching this game going, how good is this? How do I get involved in mm. integrated footy next year? What, what's, the, what's the go if clubs want to get involved in this competition or people out there want to play integrated footy? Well, as I said, we've got, we've got ten, 10 clubs that uh, are delivering integrated footy. They're, they're, they're local footy clubs. You, you become part of a local footy club. Um, so it's just a case of going on the website of the Perth Football League and looking for the integrated footy comp. You'll see the amount of teams that, that are, are clubs that you can join. Um, and it's like anything. You just go down to your local footy club and you put your hand up and get involved. It's Excellent. Uh, and it is that easy. That and easy? those clubs are ready and rearing to get people numbers on board. I so, yeah, definitely get involved. I have to be, I haven't played for about 30 years and I'm glad looking at the weather now <laughs> uh, I don't play anymore. Well, <laughs> yeah, cool. I called it a little bit of drizzle. It's, it's turned to uh, something a bit more sinister than that. So, yeah, a fair bit of rain coming down. So yeah, as so it is looking like it might set in. We'll see how we go. But um, thank you so much, Dave. So we are at the end of the first quarter of the Integrated Grand Final. It is currently... Uh, 3 2 20 to Zero. Williton. Yep. And zip to Coolbinia at this point in time. We're going to take a break, and you are with Perth Footy Life. Thank you so much. <laughs> At Carlton Football Club, we use Interchange of Pro software to manage our rotations on game day with our men's team, women's team and VFL affiliate Northern Blues. The software is simple and user friendly and gives us a great idea of how to manage our players' rotations during a match. Interchange of Pro provides concise information about players' time on ground and time on the bench. We can also see how long players have been on the ground and can figure accurate alerts for individual players to manage their rotations and game time. Using the software, we can keep track of how many minutes our players have played on the ground and spent on the bench for the whole entire season creating a database. We find Interchange of Pro a great solution to managing our players' rotations on game day and it'll be a great tool at community level too.
League Integrated Grand Final between Coolbinia and Williton. And at this point in time, Williton is leading 2 2 20, and Coolbinia is unfortunately, or has not unfortunately, put a score on the board yet. And straight away, Williton are charging at goal, so asserting a little bit more dominance. Um, the first moment they get it. Uh, but wel uh, welcome back to everybody listening in today. Um, we've had a few people chime in on the Facebook line. Oh, wait, hold up before I get to that. Woo! I thought that was going to be a beautiful snap then. They've but started the uh, second quarter lot. They've finished the first one, haven't they? <laughs> well, I actually think they're, they're probably getting even more confident out there. They're taking those kind of snaps. So number 13, who is that? A call? 13. Yeah, Uwana yeah. call. He came out, he ran through the banner and started doing handstands ah. and, and a few backflips. So he was in for a big day. Ready. He was in for a big day and he's need Red Bull. got plenty of energy. <laughs> so I'll just read through a few of the comments on Facebook. Um, we've had quite a few shout outs. We have Stephanie who said, good, good luck, coolies, coolbinia, so coolies for short. Um, have fun out there. And we've got the red, white and blue um, symbols representing Kulpinia. Um, we have Sam Rowan who's cheering for Williton and Sam is from North Beach Football Club so thanks for uh, tuning in today Sam and getting behind Williton. Uh, Robert, uh, Robbie Gregory nearly turned that uh, name into one word. Good luck to, to Kulpinia and to all of his friends at the club. So great to see you getting behind your friends, um, Robbie. Tasha Duffield says, go Willow. So we've got the Coolies and Willow. And oh my word, the Willow girls are not liking some of those umpiring calls out there. It's definitely turned into wet weather footy, hasn't it? So <laughs> plays into Willowden's favour a bit. I think their game plan is get the ball deep forward and lock it in. Corbini is trying to break through that now with a nice kick out to Alex Seymour. Takes a grab right on the wing, right in front of us. Looks like he's a left foot up. Nice, beautiful, oh, kick. beautiful kick. Half forward flank. Oh. Two on one. Now, who was that? Number 30 just needed to back himself then. He wasn't entirely confident about taking it, but he was in the right position. Oh, dangerous kick into the half back flank. Now I need Corbini to get myself up. a copy, copy of those uh, numbers and names. Here we go. Should be able to actually. Oh, he's got that was a beautiful Tyler Gould. He's had a really back, good. He's had a really good getting period. Getting called back. The captain. Oh, is that the captain out there? Yeah, Tyler. He can. Uh, something's happened. Must have been a bit of something behind the ball. I think. I've got a player running to the boundary That's line right, here. Kevin. It's been pretty lively out there as well. So. May have been an incident. So this is maybe having a bit of a break. That's Kevy. The girls are calling out to Kevy down there. Um, Kevy actually has been pretty up and about, so um, that Tyler is again. a loss. Beautiful left foot centre half forward to the leading player. Yeah. Zach, we can hear the girls calling him out too. Oh, it gets taken high Zach and the good Queen call on. by the umpire. Yeah, he's got the orange boots. Oh, he's a tall boy. He's Let's tall, see if he's he can got the orange in, boots. Mate. I reckon he'll plug this. Oh, no, he spotted hasn't. a short lead. Unfortunately, Gardy wasn't able to quite get to it. But here we go. Oh, nice snap. Jeez, he loves those, doesn't he? That's a call. Loves a bit of a fancy snap. And just another attempt, but unfortunately popped a point on the scoreboard. Two goal six. I hope I don't come back to rue these missed chances. Now, Joe, you didn't happen to uh, note down who kicked those first two goals. For Williton, uh, Willow. I got one of them. I've got Aaron Richards. Aaron Richards got and one. I reckon Caleb Heron might have got the second one with that All beautiful. All right, Facebook soccer. community, can you just confirm uh, for us our two goal kickers from Willow, Aaron Richards and possibly Caleb Heron. Caleb Heron. With a beautiful Heron. soccer. Ah, yes. Worthy I do turn. recall that. Right, that's good. possibly goal There's of Lindsay, the game. another gun. Taps it to himself, taps it forward again, gets one in the back, I reckon. And that's gone that way. All right, ends up in the Coolies' hands. Let's see what Ashworth can do with it. Sends it into the centre. He's actually spotted a couple of boys upfield. He had two options there. Yeah. Beautiful mark then by Duffield. Let's see where he delivers it. Straight down the line. Nice but is it going to get there? Yes, it is. Munro pops.
pop, popped himself in beautiful position then. Duffield punches the air, beautiful kick. Had an extra five or ten metres on it and just caught the defender off guard there. Munro from about 45. Oh, thought might, they might have shepherded that through, but no. At least uh, we have a score for the Corbinia. A score yeah. on the board for Coolies. They need to just lock this in their Ford 50 and get get something out of this play. Come on, Coolies. Let's make a challenge out of this quarter, hey? He's gone the snap out of fullback. Oh, cut oh. off by Duffield. He's having a good patch. Snaps it to the 10 metres out. Dribbling ball. It's getting muddy down there too. Here's he, Ashford. He's going to play into his hands. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's all. Oh, she's just needed a few more legs on it, but it was beautifully delivered to the goal. Ball. Goal line. Okay, Williton clearing it again. Oh, they can possibly they're, they're, run down this side, oh. can't they? No! Who's holding him up down well done, here? Well done, Hallows. Left his man. It was a two-on-one. Oh, oh beautiful the, body work. He's got the big body. Mate, someone tried a bit of body work on Hallows, but he took that easily. Go, Chris! Go, Chris! I reckon has got the rev up at quarter time because they've come out <laughs> a bit, bit <laughs> more interested in the second quarter. I reckon you're right, Joe. <laughs> They've got to get something out of this. Oh. Number six, oh. good tackle. They no, got it away, got it away. Are they going to let it run or are they calling it back? No, nah, we're still live. All right. The boys are getting in the thick of things, but now the whistle's Boys. blowing. A little bit of holding, it looks like. Okay, Willerton's going to try and clear it from the coolies forward. And it looks like they are straight to Gould. And that's the captain, yes? All right, good. Let's see what you've got, mate. You've spotted 28 down the side here, side here Donegan. Bit of pressure being placed on him by the Cooley boys, so he's had to move it on. Unfortunately, he had to move it on a little bit too quickly, so it's getting a little bit messy in terms of Williton's control of the ball. ball but a call! That fancy footballer has just made a little bit of magic out of that gather and kick into their 50. Oh, great hand pass. And yeah, number seven's been up and about as well. That's Arbuckle, Arbuckle. yeah. He's had a good 10-minute period. And it's over the line. And we're waiting for one of the boys to gather it. So, Coolies uh, did a great, um, it's a great work from them just to try to make a little bit um, better use of the ball, getting it through to their 50 and locking it in. Now we've had a turnover, it's up the other end of the ground, so let's see um, whether Willerton can dominate here or yeah, not. Great no, mark by not Hallows, there. he's helped turn this Who around for Corbinia. And his mate, we Lindsay. Much better. We're, joined, we're joined here in the commentary team by uh, the manager of WA All Abilities Football. Hayden Marchetto, someone I work alongside and know how passionate he is about uh, integrated footy. Hayden, welcome. Joe Giordiades, thanks for having me. You're a very, very busy man, and this is the grand, your grand final, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, how it's, good it's is it? It's our grand final. It's our yeah. grand final. Look, it's everyone's grand final, as you can see today. The car park's full. Oh! If you're not here, you're missing out, I reckon. And, mate, uh, how good is it? The, the, yeah, you're right. The car park's full. I think they're running out of burgers at Kelmscott because the crowd is that big, it's that vocal, and uh, they're really getting into this game. Well, Tony Galati's just arrived with his free potatoes. They're already peeling them. We're getting them ready for the uh, chip roll. So uh, plenty going on. A bit of rain coming in. I don't think it'll set in for the rest of the day, even though it looks like it is, but maybe I'm being a bit optimistic. But Yeah, you are, mate. It's what, set what in. A, <laughs> what a celebration of footy it is today. Absolutely. Bring your gumboots if you're coming down to the Oval. But Hayden, how, how good has your year of integrated footy been this year in, I, in Perth Footy League's 100th year? Played 120 games, home and away, um, A and B division. You know, we still were interrupted twice with COVID, as, as everyone has been throughout Australia and the world. But um, to get two games away today, grand, both grand finals and A and B division is... Um, is testament to all the stakeholders of the clubs. To be honest, all we, all I do is administer the competition. The clubs, the clubs are the winner, the ones who uh, really drive it home and, and make things happen. And they're the ones taking the phone calls all the time. And um, uh, we're pretty privileged to have people like that in our game. And have you been able to watch the footy at all today? Um, obviously, have you noticed anyone out there that's really caught your eye? 
Yeah, look, to be honest, David Hallows, obviously one of the best integrated players in Australia, same with Lindsay Ashworth. So they're playing for the Corbinia teams. They've made all Australian honours previously. Also, uh, Tyson Worthington, number 12 from Willerton. He is a jet. Uh, um, just picked up the ball clean as day there. He'll get it back here again and probably go long for goal, although we share it around. But he's a great young fella working now as a tie fitter, so it's fantastic to see there's employment opportunities for a lot of the players and um, a massive, a massive day of footy. Uh, this is this will be a great game. This one. And so, have you got any key matchups? Can you, what do you What do you think are going to be the key matchups today, or that you've noticed so far? Well, I think important is um, one of the important linchpins is the Australian cricketer for Corbinia number 14, Boy Duffield. He was uh, instrumental yeah. last week, so he's uh, he'll, 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 him, yep. he'll come to half forward. You know, Willerton will need to keep an eye on him because if he gets out, he'll kick a few real quick. Uh, also, Lindsay, obviously, he's so clean, so fit. He is uh, a real um, legend of the game, to be honest, from an integrated point of view. Has played a bit of grade footy with Kulbinia because they support their players going through them and playing other than integrated football. Uh, Brian Adams oh. has just picked up the ball clean oh, there. there we he go. runs inside 50. Run. Like Aaron Richards on the last ball line. Ball oh, just the right. it. Trevor's got him on fire there. So this is a close game of footy. What a great day. Yeah, Aaron Richards is a pretty safe anchor back there. He's doing well. Oh, unlucky. The Wilton player just got a hand in there and knocked it out. He would have run into an open goal. So well done to Wilton there. And he's but got really 50 metres to boot. Yeah, really stiff on um, really making sure that we uh, administer the rules as effectively as we can. So if there's any dissent, the umpires are straight onto it. It's just another competition within the uh, Perth Football League. And, you know, Thursday night meals are A-grade women's teams, Colts teams, and the integrated team. That, that's inclusion. That's what it should look like. So, Hayden, tell us about the genesis of the integrated um, competition. Well, it began um, with a few clubs in 2009. Peter Grosser, who's here today, he's uh, the... Um, one of the founders of the competition and, and it is this is called the Grosser Cup yes yeah the Peter Grosser Cup it is yeah absolutely the A Division Peter Grosser Cup and uh, he'll be here he's here today to present that cup and um, from there it's grown from three to five to seven and now we've got 11 teams so I, and that's I, I, across I, the two divisions yeah, yeah it is it's across two divisions and, and I view it from our point of view is these teams actually build capacity within the clubs mm. it's not the clubs building capacity within these players so what they do over every day is really important. But and just sorry to cut you off there, Hayden, but we've got Jeffrey Stewart, Thanks number Stewart. 15. Uh, he, he's been he's been a state player previously as well and travelled with the team across the state. So uh, he's a, a a young leader going a lot a long way within um, business. Also, he's also doing a podcast and on the radio. So Jeff Stewart, oh, good is, on him. he's a, he's a ripping young guy. Sounds like a gun. So what do we got? Two, seven, is that updated? No, three, it's going to be three, three seven. seven yeah, three, so. seven, to one, zip one. And I've got the chips and coke have just arrived, so that's very generous of you. Thank you, young fella. That's why you're the manager, Hayden. I, re yeah. I reckon he's had a few on the way, though. Traffic, what do you yeah, think, it does though? look a bit light. That's all yours. Um, uh, over the, so, let me see. It's Kulbinia who is, uh, well, obviously they're not, it's not looking like it at the moment, but a lot can change in, in football, in a half of football. So Kulbinia um, were looking at a seventh premiership. Have you noticed, what have you noticed change about... Worthen well, goes a barrel off half back. How good was that? And ends up in a core. Oh, no, not quite in a core's hands, but it is dangerous when he it gets does, you know, he, we go. He fights on beautifully and wins the one-on-one. -on -one. There's hey, three of them here. This Corbinia team, has it changed much in those seven years? Do you see a lot of players come in and out, or are there real, some real rusted rusted on diehards? No, there's some uh, real uh, stays in the club, and, and the reason for their success over the last... Well, they've been in the competition now. This will be their eighth year. Mm -hmm. They've played in the last seven grand finals and won six in a row. So um, they've been a club that's been very successful and integrated from a premiership point of view, and... Um, the two leaders, of the two stakeholders of that team, um, John Stone and Kylie Stone, do a great job of inclusion. And So to be honest, we just actually uh, had to create a bit of equalisation within the competition and um, we came up with a, a, a slight grading system on some, some high-functioning players and, and the limitations to the amount of those players you could play on the field. And mm -hmm. that's probably brought Kulbinia about back to the pack a little bit. Okay. Can you tell us about Wilton uh, and their... Uh, emergence because they're looking really strong. Looks like they've also got five or six really gun players out there. Well, led by Perry Clappe, the uh, president of uh, Williton, it's a full club approach. 
uh, Willerton, they train with, the, with all the main teams, you know, women's, men's and the grade teams celebrate all the, all the milestones. But look, they've worked really hard as we get to half time, but they've worked really hard on recruitment and, and trying to get players to go to their club and um, they've been successful as we can see. They're certainly going into half time with a really strong lead. They're three goals six, which is a, a big gap with this sort of weather around. Uh, they've got a spring in their step. They run into the boundary line for Kulbinia. Uh, they've really got some challenges here. They're going to have to go and rethink their approach and really come back with a bit of bit more energy in the second half. A quick, a, a quick question for the both of you. What are you liked about calling the games today? Look, to be fair, Hayden, I don't know how to call a game at all. In, it's, I don't call a lot of football games. Um, but what don't, I, let, don't let the facts get in front of the story. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I, but what I've enjoyed about the game is um, the absolute tenacity with which these boys play their footy. Um, and I'm loving seeing particularly the way that they celebrate their footy as well. It's fury, footy in its purest form and mm -hmm. um, uh, that's what I love about it and uh, all different abilities and uh, but what, what we want to do is make sure this happens every day and so this is just a platform for participants to belong to, belong to community clubs mm -hmm. um, that anyone else belongs to and um, these, the, what the sport does is uh, is something that you get a fresh coat of paint of each time you come along to one of these games. So, yeah, as I said earlier, if you're not here, you're missing out. Maybe you're watching it on the on the uh, on the box. Um, but yeah, great celebration. I'm not sure if it's set in Joe to be honest. Looking at, looking at it now, yeah, it has lightened uh, off. I, I, it's lightened, but it's still drizzly. It's going to hang around a bit. I thought you were in marketing, Joe. I thought you you know optimist. Yeah, I'm a realist. And what I've seen at the moment is Wilton's gone in at half time. Coolbin here, guys. They've decided to stay out, it looks like. It looks like their coach is saying, we don't care if it's raining, we don't care if it buckets down, we need to bring the heat in the second half because this game is getting away from them. But I did notice something. I'm one for the little things, Hayden. I saw Wilden's captain, Tyler Gould, he ran through the banner and he took the whole banner with him, didn't he? <laughs> the whole banner just went with him. He was fired up, and he certainly played that way. He has been amazing. That is passion, uh, passion and high energy. I think Tyler Gould, he would be the nicest young man in integrated football. He's a, a, a great young fella, and uh, I learn a lot from him. He's a, he's a ripping young guy, and he's, he's actually played in the state team also. So he's actually one of the greater players. So he plays in Willerton, as is Tyson. So... Mm. It's a bit of prestige out there, isn't there, there in is terms prestige. of those in yeah, the integrated path, players? Yeah, yeah, and the pathways that, that the competition offers. So not only can they play for their community club, they can also go into an um, inclusion um, football academy and then from there be chosen yeah. for their state to go and represent WA and play in the inclusion carnival. Last time we travelled to uh, New South Wales and um, we made the B Division Grand Final. So it, it, ama amazing opportunities for people who want to play our sport. And Hayden, just, just tell us... As we go into half time, tell us a little bit about our, our major sponsor today of the integrated competition. Yes, yeah, so Life Without Barriers are a disability support uh, provider. And a couple of years ago, I had a, a coffee with their West Australian director, Jenny Burns. And, and from there, we struck up a, 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 a pretty unique relationship. And their support for the competition is, has been outstanding and unwavering from the start. And um, they're the perfect sponsor to have. They never ask of too much. And so you want to keep trying to do more for them. And... We love that they're a part of our game and um, they actually see prestige in it, which is a, a really good way to be. And their involvement and what they are able to do puts the jumpers on the backs of a lot of the teams. Um, you know, every team pays an affiliation fee, but it's heavily reduced because we believe that there's a, a, an onerous on the players to become members of their community clubs. So, you know, an exchange happens there um, and, it, and it creates a... a a real contract between the player and each club and then we charge a small affiliation fee to, for insurance but I think like umpires. inclusivity sometimes requires slightly different pathway ac like pathway access absolutely yeah. absolutely or access um, pathways yeah but we're, this is uh, you know a, just a great opportunity for footy to be in front of a, a big crowd today full car park love it absolutely well, thank you so much, Hayden, for um, chatting to us about the competition. We have uh, at halftime 3 7, 25 2 Willerton, and unfortunately, Kulbinia is a little bit behind with just one.
and if you thought on the board. if you thought Hayden was a, a special guest, wait till you see who we've got Woo! after half time. Right. Sorry, Hayden, you might get trumped by. I'm not going to say who it is, so but you're going to have to tune in. That's all right. You're all starting right, off a low base if you're coming <laughs> off me. So uh, call you're well, a humble man, Hayden. Call, humble call man. well, you two, and uh, we look forward to the end of the game. Well, and, and you'll be doing the uh, the pres helping with the presentation. So all the best on a fantastic. Uh, congratulations on a fantastic integrated season 2021. Yeah, well done. Thank you, Hayden. Call well. See ya. All right. So we'll call it a break for now, and we will be back for the third quarter. <laughs> At Carlton Football Club, we use Interchange of Pro software to manage our rotations on game day with our men's team, women's team and VFL affiliate Northern Blues. The software is simple and user friendly and gives us a great idea of how to manage our players' rotations during a match. Interchange of Pro provides concise information about players' time on ground and time on the bench. We can also see how long players have been on the ground and can configure accurate alerts for individual players to manage their rotations and game time. Using the software, we can keep track of how many minutes our players have played on the ground and spent on the bench for the whole entire season creating a database. We find Interchange of Pro a great solution to managing our players' rotations on game day, and it'll be a great tool at community level too.
Stuck in the change rooms and you come out and your team's, the other team's ready to go. So let's see. So the team in front was still in the change rooms talking very seriously about the game ahead, eh? Yeah, and the weather has, Hayden was right, the weather has uh, stopped raining, but it's going to be a bit greasy, but um, we look like a really tight um, second half just as the players get into their positions. All right, so we've got... Zachary Aquino lining up against, is that David Hallows out there or is yeah. it someone else he's lining up yeah, against? Yeah, no, it looks like David Hallows. He's been very good so far. All right, here we go. There's the siren. All right, we are into the third quarter of the integrated Coolbinia uh, Williton. The Coolies versus the versus Willow Grand Final third quarter. And at the moment, Williton have... A 24 lead. So let's see what the Coolies can do to turn this game around. They at least have won that first centre clearance and are driving for goals. Let's see what they can make of it. Here we go. He's Alex put it on his Seymour. boot. Second kick. Not left, but unfortunately hasn't hit the scoreboard. Yeah, Alex Love Seymour. that ferocity out of the centre, though, from the Coolies, from the uh, red, blue and white. We want to make it a competition, boys, so let's bring it. How did that end up out there? I looked down momentarily at my drink. I got sidetracked by Carlton Dry. Uh, dry. And it's ended up on yeah. the boundary in whose hands? In the Coolies' hands. Okay, is he going to yeah. take a shot on goal here? Let's see what he's got. He's going to fall short, but it is. Well, did he see that short lead on? Did he see that short lead? That's our man, ball? Alex Seymour. He, he could have had three kicks in, in the first 30 seconds of the game. It's in trusty, worthy hands here with Tyson Worthington. Um, he's had a bet. <laughs> nice pun, Joe. <laughs> You're really warming up to this commentary gig, aren't you? <laughs> and Aquino, yeah, just drops a mark, but he's come out really strongly too. Gets shunted off the ball. And, uh, and Gould. Tyler Gould. Yeah, he cuts it off. He's been very strong. Hand passes again to Worthington. Bit of dash off oh, the try back fend line. Off. And a great free. tackle by David Hallows. He wasn't going to cop any of that. <laughs> He's a big man to get around, isn't he? You can't. Yeah. Get, have a good go at that fend off, mate, but it ain't going to work on me. All right. Driving it into the forward line. It's just been punched back out. But it has ended up, oh, nearly ended up in, let me see, Crane's hands. But unfortunately couldn't quite gather it. Now Willerton's taking control. So missed a little, bit of a sitting sitter there. 22, Trent Fleming. But he's still persisting to make up for it. And now it is going. Oh, it's bouncing around a little bit, actually. It's gone Williton's way, Coolbinia's way, back and forth a little bit. What we want to see is the Coolies get control of it and drive it into their 50, get some um, score on the scores on the board and maybe make this a little bit of a competition. So let's see what they can make, the mo make out of it now. Ooh. Had a bit of a, do we have a bit of a sling, a bit of a jumper <laughs> throw there? Oh, that was head over the board, just picked it up beautifully off the deck. That's the captain, Cap captain? Is yeah. that correct, Yeah, Joe? that's that right, captain? captain. And this, this little fella. That's Worthington. Worthington. Yeah, you're right, he's quite athletic, isn't he? Connor Olsen's at the back of the pack there. Oh, what can a core do? He's dangerous. Well done, Cooley. Standing up under pressure. They've pushed it back out again. Yeah, I actually think um, the, the problem down down uh, in the back line for, for Coolbinia is that they might not have the pace to keep up with the Willerton boys. I think they, you know, they're big boys. They're, they're, they're taking strong marks. They're standing up against their competitors, but they may not have the pace at this point in time to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That might be where it's falling apart a little bit. Is that in the hands of Worthington or someone else down there? Yeah, no, it's Worthington. Looks very this is our man of core. And it's gone out of bounds. All right, oh, so we're waiting for our... Full. Oh, out on the full. Back in the coolies' hands. We're waiting for our special guest. Trent Fleming also kicked that one in number 22 for Coolbinia. He's been very impressive as and well. And I do believe our special guest has arrived. He's just having a coffee and putting his headgear on, but we're joined by the Minister for Sport, the one and only Dr Tony Booty. So I understand, Tony, thanks yeah. for joining us. 
Um, I understand we're on your home deck here at Kelmscott. Tell us about that. You are. You're on the, the holy grail, the holy surface of uh, John Dunn <laughs> Football Oval. Uh, yeah, it was, I played for Kelmscott back in the heydays when uh, this, what was then the Sunday League was really massive uh, oh, back in the so time the yeah league. Dennis Committee actually coached the league team wow. and Ooh. had a lot of its West Perth players but you know ever win a premiership I well funny you should say that yes I was captain of the uh, 1980 Colts premiership team for Cam Scott against Gossels the arch well rival oh, yeah. well, Ruckman or I was in the a, forward I was a Ruckman a Ruckman mm-hmm. changing in the forward uh, but in those days like I mean look at the great crowd today uh, that's what we would have and even more mm. uh, so it was you know really strong Colts uh, reserves and league competition, so it's great. So and obviously, very well supported by the community with those kind of numbers. Incredibly, yeah. incredibly well supported. You know, you also had Armadale well supported, Gosnells. So yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, league. actually, I was at Gosnells um, Football Club last week. They are an amazing footy club with a lot of um, history there. Mm. Beautiful ground, beautiful grandstand, and yeah, really solid people. Yeah, there well, too. that's where all the finals used to be held for the uh, uh, yes. Sunday league. Yep. Yeah. So Tony, tell us about your favourite memory of this this oval. It's a fantastic. We're in. We can see the hills in the backdrop, yeah. but uh, you must have at least one really fantastic memory out there. Well, I, actually, funny you say that. I think it was probably the game that we played. I think we were playing Quinana. I think it was Quinana. I, I managed to bag about six or seven goals. Oh, of course in you the did. Forward line, oh, so did. that's probably my, my favourite moment. <laughs> uh, although, actually, probably, if I had... The one thing I remember more was... Oh, oh. just dodged him. Beautiful. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, it was just a oh, lovely... that's Tyler. Little, that's Tyler. little yeah. body movement there. Yeah, Ty- Tyler player, Good. Isn't he? Yeah, 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 very agile. Tough. Yeah, well, Tyler's uh, brother uh, was on my staff for a period of time, so uh-huh. I'm, I'm following him. Know him well. Yes. So, so Tony, we're very... Very surprised we heard you talking about uh, integrated footy in this grand final mm-hmm. in Parliament the other day. Mm. Yes. Uh, that was Wednesday and yeah. uh, fantastic rap that you gave today's game. Can you tell us about that and any feedback you might have got from your constituents? Yeah, look, um, that uh, brief ministerial statement that I made in Parliament about the grand finals this weekend and also the integrated competition run by the Great Perth Football League... Um, was really incredibly well received by my parliamentary colleagues, but I had a lot of feedback on Twitter and Facebook and people ringing up saying, um, this is fantastic, and, um, you know, we really we really buy into this concept, which is... Oh, you know, the Coolies have oh. got it onto their boot. Are they hitting their first goal of the game? Well yeah. done. Look like Boyd Duffield. Woo! Did we see... Who was it? Boyd Duffield. Boyd Duffield. Torpedo. There we go. Metres out, straight Come on, Duffield, that. making it a competition for us. Here we go. Yeah, we marked him down as one of the better players in the first half as well. So he's uh, he's brought his team back into it. So Three goal seven twenty five to one goal one seven. Eighteen point ball game. So Tony, um, you were saying that people got in contact with you yeah. off the back of that parliamentary speech to let you to show their support. Sure. Um, were there people uh, putting their hand up and saying, "How can I get involved"? Well, actually, yeah, because a lot of people had no idea uh, there was such ah. a competition. Uh, so um, we're hoping uh, that uh, it will result in the Kelmscott Football Club next year having a, a stronger list, uh, or more players, actually, in their integrated football team. And um, also just people who have uh, who are parents of people with disabilities just thinking it was just fantastic that there's this uh, opportunity for their, um, their kids to be able to play a sport. Mm. So it's, it's fantastic. No, we're really, really, really good. Now, and do you, sorry, no, go no, ahead. No, no, go, no, go. No, it was. I was just going to say, I did also notice that you were wearing a Fremantle scarf, and I did approved. You? Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> very good. I'm glad you did. That was a uh, yeah, vintage uh, female scarf. I mean, look, you've got it. You've got to celebrate it. I mean, we yeah. hadn't we hadn't won a derby, a Western Derby, for about six years, so you've got to celebrate <laughs> good those on you, moments. Tony. And yeah. I'm not going to talk about Chelsea because this is a. It's a football, but uh, we share, we have a common interest. Well, I actually thought you were talking Chelsea, Chelsea Randall. <laughs> what was it? Was AFLW Chelsea, Adelaide Crows player coming? I'm to talking Stanford Bridge. I'm talking <laughs> yeah, Champions Chelsea, League. That's right. The great Chelsea Football Club, who won three 0 in their th- three one, I think, was it three one last week, and um, obviously take on one of the arch enemies, Arsenal tonight. But you love you love your AFL. You love your soccer. Uh, you love your disability sport. You must just be in your Apart from all the headaches still with politicians all the time, Tony, you must be just in your dream job, are you? I reckon that it's a bit of a dream. I'm living the dream. Yep. Is that? Day. Oh, sorry, I thought they got cool. He's yeah. got a second, but just a point. And and talk about number one, Snap, oh, just misses. He's had a lot of the pill in the, in the third quarter, Alex Seymour. 
Uh, Tony, is WA looking like getting a couple of big milestone events coming here? Well, that's the, you, you asked the uh, after very uh, sixty-four thousand dollar question. Ooh, I mean, right. who knows? Who knows? I mean, one would have to say the the current figures that came out of Victoria mm. today would. Um, probably make it incredibly unlikely that Victoria will be staged in any final series. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, oh, uh, dragged off it. Oh, That's got to be a free. We just got to get the AFL to make a decision. Uh, we, you know, They came to us first. Uh, we, we went back to them with an offer we mm -hmm. think is very reasonable. So it's up to them. Oh, yeah, beautiful. Oh. They're starting mark. to come back, aren't they? Mm. Yeah, Ashworth to Seymour so there. And Seymour, I reckon he's had six kicks this quarter. He needs to go back and slot this one for his team, though, doesn't he? So I see what you're trying to do there, uh, Joe. Get the inside word on whether we're mm. going to get the um, grand final at Optus is, Stadium. Is there also some Could other things around? Could have been breaking news on Perth Footy Life. <laughs> is it um, the dis dis and dis oh, dis what have we got? Tony, is there anything uh, there, there is, a, there is a, a, a committee group that's outside government that's looking looking at um, trying to get the Special Olympics here in 2027, which would be an outstanding achievement if, if, it, if it's pulled off. Um, of course, uh, a proposal hasn't formally come to government, but um, I have been working with uh, Minister Punch, uh, Disability Service Minister, and uh, Dave Templeman, the Minister for Tourism, just looking at um, the issue, and uh, we'll just have to see how it uh, develops, but I think it would be you know, quite outstanding if we could get the Special Olympics in 2027. Uh, that would be. And your team, you're obviously, we mentioned earlier, Fremantle. How do you think they could go tomorrow? Do you think they can still make the finals? Uh, no, nah, look, um, while I'm, you know, I love my Dockers, I can't see them making the finals. They, they, they might win tomorrow, um, but I don't think they'll make the finals because they need so much to go right. Mm. And also, I would say that the Derby was basically like our grand final it was. For, for the 2021 season, yeah, right? It was indeed, <laughs> and um, it was indeed our grand final. And of course, David Mundy breaks the uh, club all, the, the club record next, uh, tomorrow, which is fantastic. What an absolute champion. Oh, yes, he is. And all the good, all the right players are getting into the game here. That was a great mark taken at centre-half back. Chips Oh, I'm loving David the Hallows. way that... You know, Worthington's getting involved. Gould's getting involved. It might have been a stroke of genius from the Coolies coach there, keeping him out on the ground at half-time. Yeah, certainly they've come back with the right attitude. And uh, what is it? 11-point ball game, two goals, and they're back in front. Who could believe it? So what do you love about integrated footy, Tony? Well, a couple... I mean, a, well, a lot of things, but one of the things is just the ability that uh, people that do have a, an intellectual... Uh, disability are uh, not they're not judged they're not judged on their um, uh, their disability they're judged on their capacity and willingness to play football which is absolutely fantastic an opportunity to play something that they want to that they love which I think is fantastic and the other major thing is that it brings so much worth to the football clubs that they're involved with yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I can only speak um, from a women's footy perspective, but um, I know that having the women's footy teams at clubs have have definitely um, transformed them, and I would assume that it works the same way in terms of having an integrated team at your club as well. It's just all about enriching your club through that diversity, through that inclusivity, um, and it's a net gain in my opinion. Well, exactly, and I'm glad you brought up the women's game because it's just exponentially grown in uh, in WA. So I, I actually see integrated or all abilities football and uh, the and uh, women's football has been really the two major positive signs of football in the last few years, and I think it's just going to go from strength to strength. I um, mean, definitely when we get a comeback in a grand final in the third term like this, hey, we are tuning in for this game because, as you say, Tony, it has suddenly become far more exciting with the way that cool, the Coolies are attacking um, the game in the third quarter. Uh, Joe, have you noticed anyone in particular that's having a big impact this quarter for the Coolies? Is there anyone driving this comeback? Well, I've, I've, no, I've mentioned him a few times, Alex Seymour. He just got shunted out of the way by Gould, but... Uh, I would be tagging him in the, in the last quarter because he's been really active. He's set up two or three scoring opportunities and kicked the goal himself. So, yeah, he's, he's got really active. That's excellent. Um, Tony, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate your time today. And um, oh, of course, Hang on. Oh, and speak of the devil. Another one. Oh, there's 12, 50, 50 guffs breaking out. Tempers overflowing. <laughs> They're on Tempers the way back. Fearing. They're on the way back. Is that three? Three-two? Mm, yeah. Is it a five-point game? It is indeed. Woo!
look, I mean, I... You know, we, Who we, can believe it? Yeah, I mean, we also... It's not like we want one team... No. Well, certainly not the commentator. We don't, we don't have a preference for what team you wins. We just want a competition. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Yeah, we we do. want to see both teams compete. We want to see each team go out there and feel like they've act- absolutely given everything... I don't know what happened to Corbin. The coach has pulled something no, was, out of his magic hat. He was at keeping him out there. <laughs> I don't know if it was a smell insult or what it was, but uh, they have come back all fired. It's like Willerton hasn't had the ball in their half this this term, and uh, we're looking up for an excellent uh, last quarter, aren't we? Anyone mm. could win. Mm. Tony, sorry, before you go, before we um, wrap things up for the third quarter, because we're getting pretty close to that time. Oh, there we there go. We are. There we are. Um, just really quickly, are you seeing the integrated competition inspire similar opportunities for junior ranks? Yeah, look, um, I, I think uh, the fact that this is such now a strong competition is certainly inspiring um, younger people that uh, may have challenges to look at the fact that they can play football. Mm. Or, or the, and the good thing is that they're looking at sport generally. You know, maybe it may not be football, but they'll go and play soccer or cricket. Uh, so, look, it's just it's just positive all the way through to the junior to the senior ranks. So because you are, you're seeing in general more all abilities, opportunities sure. in sport and recreation in WA. Yeah, and I think the uh, the days of excuses that it's too hard are, are, are not being accepted anymore, which is oh, fantastic. Fair call, absolutely. Yeah. And Tony, how's a coffee out here, mate? Okay, one thing, it's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> it's, it's strong. It's very strong, I must say. There's, you a, there's a decent lineup, I have to yeah, say. I, the canteen's I think they may be there day. for the chips rather than the coffee, though. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> or the carton dries. Thank you so much, okay. Tony, for joining us. We really um, appreciate your time. And that takes us to, to our third quarter break with the Coolies making some kind of astonishing comeback to only be uh, five points behind at this point in time. All right. And we'll be back for the fourth quarter. Thank you so much. At Carlton Football Club, we use Interchange of Pro software to manage our rotations on game day with our men's team, women's team and VFL affiliate Northern Blues. The software is simple and user-friendly and gives us a great idea of how to manage our players' rotations during a match. Interchange of Pro provides concise information about players' time on ground and time on the bench. We can also see how long players have been on the ground and can configure accurate alerts for individual players to manage their rotations in game time. Using the software, we can keep track of how many minutes our players have played on the ground and spent on the bench for the whole entire season creating a database. We find Interchanger Pro a great solution to managing our players' rotations on game day, and it'll be a great tool at community level too. At Carlton Football Club, we use Interchange of Pro software to manage our rotations on game day with our men's team, women's team and VFL affiliate Northern Blues. The software is simple and user friendly and gives us a great idea of how to manage our players' rotations during a match. Interchange of Pro provides concise information about players' time on ground and time on the bench. We can also see how long players have been on the ground and can configure accurate alerts for individual players to manage their rotations in game time. Using the software, we can keep track of how many minutes our players have played on the ground and spent on the bench for the whole entire season creating a database. We find Interchanger Pro a great solution to managing our players' rotations on game day and it'll be a great tool at community level too.
hear me over it is the um, girls, the cheer squad for Williton Football Club. They are 100% getting behind their boys, their integrated boys at the moment because, of course, it is the integrated grand final and Williton came out firing, absolutely dominated the first half. We don't know if it was um, Cooley staying out in the rain. We don't know what kind of juju was in that rain. But the Cooleys have come out in the third quarter and nearly even the score. So they're only five points behind at the moment. Um, and that is why those girls are, are doing their absolute best to G up their boys to get over the line. Because this is going to be a very special um, grand final win if Williton, Williton can take it out. It will be their, I believe, first integrated uh, premiership. Um, and they will finally, if they take it out, mind you, they might finally knock the Coolies um, off the top of the ladder with six or seven um, premierships to their, their name at this point in time. But myself and Joe are very fortunately joined by Perry from Williton uh, Football Club. I had the pleasure to be there uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, and Perry's joined us to have a chat about his integrated team and what he's seeing happening out there on the field at the moment. Yeah. How are you going, Perry? Not too bad, thanks, Sandra. I'm not Lovely sure. to have you here. Yes, I'm a little bit nervous at the moment. It wasn't a very good third quarter for us. No, it was What do you think ha What happened in the third quarter? I don't know. I might have to talk to the coach about the mid-half-time address, I think. Yeah, OK. <laughs> well, weren't you, weren't, weren't you guys um, dragged out of the uh, change rooms late? Uh, yes. Maybe yes. trying to get a few too many um, lollies in before you ran back out on the field, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah, too much water, too much Gatorade perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> now Perry, tell us, are we safe with all these girls next to us? Because the balcony is looking pretty full, they are going nuts and uh, if your team does get up, I think they're going to they're going to have a big night, aren't they? They are indeed. They haven't got a game either after this, so they'll be going hard for sure. Oh, so that's some of your... Um, players from your women's team, that is it? That is our women's They've, team. That's your women's team getting around your integrator boys. It is, yes. Oh, that's outstanding. That is our women's team, yes. That, although it doesn't take much to encourage them to come mm. out and have a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> just the There's absolute. a few nods yeah. from the girls in. <laughs> <laughs> um, the winning is just a <laughs> goal. That was uh, oh. Lindsay Ashworth. I'm so sorry, Perry. I hope this is not the commentator's curse, but we've got you on, and then um, the Coolies have taken the lead. Yes, ma'am. I think sometimes what happens is the team in front in a grand final, they look to put the cue in the rack, so I think that could be the goal that might ignite Williton. It's now it turned into do or die. They've got to get back involved in the game. They had a great first half, um, and I think that might get them going in this last quarter. Perry, who do you think is out there that's essential to turning this around? Um, Ashley and Tyson, I think, are our two guys that we need to get in the game. Tyson, in particular, he had a great first quarter, but he's been a little bit quiet since. Tyson okay. Worthington, number 12, I think, he's wearing. Yeah, All right, Tyson, let's see Tyson get up. Yep, Worthington, oh, yes, we have mentioned his name. Yeah, and um, young Tyler here, just coming through now, number 14. Oh, Tyler Gould, yep. that's our captain. Yeah, he's been, he has been out and about. He's still been nice quite present. Oh. Um, yeah. So tell us about your integrated program at Williton. Um, well, it's got started, um, I think, two years before I arrived there as the president. It's been growing ever since. So, um, we're on to our second coach now, to her second year. But um, most of the growth and um, has been very organic coming from within, from within the player group, actually. Mm -hmm. We've got a whole bunch of new boys joined us this year from the basketball system. Oh, wow. Yeah, and so that's um, that's been a Nice massive. tackle there. Actually, Tony, Tony Booty was just talking about how there's um, far more all-ability sports to access um, for young people these days, which is great to Let's see. Let's just keep an yeah, eye on the players. Um, oh, Wellington rush behind. Great tackle there by... Is that a draw? Uh, it was Liam Scores Arbuckle even? at centre-half forward. Yep, the score will now be even. How what a good. great, what a great score! I mean, I mean, obviously not so much if you're the president of Will, but for the uh, neutral looking on, 26 all draw going into the final quarter. Amazing. We um, we do we do want to win this game. We haven't actually no. won a grand final. I know. Since 2000 yeah. And yeah, you need to break the dominance of the Coolies, we don't do. you? We do indeed. We've been undefeated so far this year as well. So yes, you took this. So um, every time that you've come up against them. Oh, well, I think the first two times in the season you yep. thoroughly beat them. Yes. And then the third time it was a little bit more of a contest. Yep. Um, but you certainly demonstrated that you've got the superior team in the competition at this point in time. So we just need them to maybe run it, run it out this quarter. Perhaps, do you think there's a little bit of, um, you know, the premiership nerves 
factoring into this? Sandra, I don't know. The first quarter, you wouldn't think so. Would yes. You? Yeah. yeah. yeah Absolute confidence written over every ball they kicked. Yeah. Bit of, bit of complacency in there at the moment. But I, uh -huh. think, um, I think what you said before is um, pretty appropriate. They'll pick it up from here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they <laughs> certainly make that play. <laughs> they will. Or else. A, okay. ni a nice <laughs> run there from. You uh, get the threat first from the president here on Perth Footy Line. Andrew Lenzo. He <laughs> ran his full measure. Uh, certainly ran his full measure. Gets a kick in. So just before you leave us, Perry, thanks so much for your time. But I hear. This isn't the ABC, so you can plug your sponsors as much as you want, mate. Yeah, Give tell us, us a, about a them. big plug for your sponsor. Um, well, the sponsor for the for the actual team is um, the, the same guy who um, made that magnificent steak sandwich for you. And it's his beef, it's mm -hmm. his beef business, Malaluka Farm Gate Produce. Yes, they're uh, amazing. They yeah, amazing. I was really impressed by their business model. It's fantastic. It's a shame it burnt to the ground, but he's got, of course he's got four other pubs, so he's doing okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but also cool. the way that he's he's come back from that the pressures of COVID and still an integral part of supporting um, local community football, Willerton and the integrated team. Yeah, and, and, and we have another sponsor as well. Tyson Worthington's snapped it. Get this from the 50 metre line. Woo! It's rolled through. Yeah, Tyson! He must have heard us saying it is to get in the game, eh? <laughs> so uh, he might be thinking about that steak sandwich, but that a could be a match winning goal. And that could be a Norm Smith type of uh, <laughs> really? sort of kick. He, and he's running back to the half back flank. What? That is unbelievable football. Yeah, look, I, I can't remember I can't remember having energy like that probably, I don't know, back in the late 80s maybe. So I guess it means we can leave Perry on good terms. You've got a seven-point <laughs> lead. There is about ten minutes left, mate, so all the best. Oh, congratulations on your season. And shout-out to CYC O'Connor Pub. Yes, and Malaluka Farmgate, who are Excellent. the sponsor for this particular team. Thank you so much. No worries, thank you. Oh, awesome, Cheers. thanks, Perry. Cheers. Oh, well, well, that was nice that maybe it wasn't so much a commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it gets it gets more complex because we're about to bring in a cool linear representative. Oh, so all right. who knows what will happen the in the coolies next The coolies boys moment. are going to have an opportunity to have a chat. We've and got Dan also. Our coolies boy is appropriately... Um, oh my God! Themed he as well with the red hair. Off. Yeah. We've just seen the top of his scone and it's red, uh, not How's like that? strawberry blonde. <laughs> it's like a pinky reddy. And how good? How's that for parochial support and loyalty, hey? Gotta love it, eh? Lindsay just bombs it. He's trying to get his team going. Uh, he wants that seventh premiership. Six is definitely not enough. But Worthington with another good mark on the half back flank kicks it out to the wing. Um, so tell us about your integrated comp. It's great to have you here. You so, so Dan, so what role do you have with the with the, with the club? Yep. Uh, so I'm a, the league player and also the uh, club treasurer. Ah, oh, excellent. Okay. And so uh, um, we first started this back in 2014, and we mm -hmm. were all as a club going, what are we actually getting into? Well, we're not sure. And mm. it, first couple of weeks, mm. oh, okay, this is pretty cool, and then. It's, it's exactly in the name. Like they started integrating all of a sudden. They're, they're not part of anything else. They're part of us. They absolutely love it. And it's probably one of the best decisions we've made as a club to start up this, to join in with Kylie and uh, Stoney there. They, they love it and they bring an energy down. To the club yeah, so Kulbinia is a fully um, integrated, all abilities yeah. Um, club. Yeah, so we've got, obviously, we've got the three men's teams and now we've got a women's team. and and as the integrated team as well, so it's absolutely awesome to have them. Yeah. All abilities, all inclusive. Yeah, it's definitely it's exactly what we're trying to get. So have so. you been involved in it since 2000 and when yeah, were you saying? 2014. 14. We started. I've, I've helped out every now and again and come okay. down and watch as many games as possible, but obviously playing sometimes a bit harder. Of course, yeah. yeah. And you must have, you must be one of the best integrated clubs in oh, Australia oh, with, with everything that you've achieved through the players and the, yeah. the community and uh, the premierships. How good has it been? It's, it's been pretty good. Like The best thing about it is they, they get just as excited as us and they get just as angry as us. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> they lose you, you're, you're, you're your best friend, but if you if you win, nah, don't want to talk about it. Yeah. They take it just as seriously as Who? us and they absolutely love it. Who have been some of your best players today, mate? Have you been able to watch most of the game? Um, so I only got here at half-time because I was watching our women play, sure. so I got here a bit late, but... Do the women get over the line? Yeah. No, unfortunately oh, not. Oh, sorry, that's, buddy. That's right. They've got next week. Oh, great. Okay, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Like so obviously, Lizzie Ashware has been great. Dave, Dave Hallows has been good. Yeah, he just bombed again. one 50 metres then. Yeah. Alex has yeah. been good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh. Yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, it's those little tackles, they, they can really make or break it. Oh, yeah. uh, all the names you mentioned, yeah, certainly we've got ticks, ticks next to their names. So how do you think, um, what is the, the like key to your success? Like, what is the special ingredient to go, is it six or seven premierships? They're going for eight. They're going for eight? <laughs> yes. Oh, my word. Seven straight premierships. Yeah. Seven. Has that, is, has that occurred in any other sport ever? Seven premierships? Probably country sport. Ah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, where, yeah, there's, where one, there's like one where town there's, that dominates. Yeah, where there's four teams in the whole competition and they're just winning in one. There's still time. There's still time, Jan, but... That was a call to, to young Daniel Donig Donigan who marked it in the goal square and just put the fear of God into that ball. He must Check out a call. That is a <laughs> celebration dance if ever I've seen one. Did he get the worm going? <laughs> Not the worm, <laughs> mate, but I reckon... It's he, pretty close to it. He got the whole body going in some way anyway. We've got about five minutes left, guys, so, uh, yeah. So what are your secret to success being for those seven premierships, do you think? So it would, it would have to be the coaches and the staff. Like mm -hmm. we, We're lucky to have Life Without Barriers helping us out and also Team Treasure. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these guys uh, work with those guys, and they've just been awesome. Like it's so hard for some yep. of these guys to sometimes even get out of bed. And then for them to come down and get down to the club, it's a massive effort just to get down to the club. But then to wow. rock up every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. That's and something. Some, oh, and even Sundays when they first started, it's been awesome. Mm. Well, tell us how your league side's going, going to go, mate, and then we'll just uh, um, tune in for the last couple of minutes of this great grand final. I'll let you know round one next year. <laughs> 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 so <laughs> did you, you, you had a good year yourself because you said you've been playing? Uh I say no, but a couple of my mates say yes. I'm, yeah. just, I'm probably one of my harshest critics, personally. Oh. Yeah. We all are. <laughs> like, you say, yep, that's a great game. Like, nah, I stuffed up that, I stuffed up that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, no, I totally understand harshest critic in the commentary tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks so much for joining Thank us. You. It is a great integrated club. You've still got a bit of life in the grand final. Yeah, we absolutely. hope uh, you still, can make a still game. Still a little life, and regardless of the outcome, really hope you guys have a bloody cracking celebration yeah, after the match. Oh, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we're going to hope for. Everyone get back to the club. Enjoy the season, yeah. Absolutely. It's not over until the fat lady sings. Absolutely. I haven't, I haven't started singing yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Dan. Yeah, that's right. See you tomorrow. Cheers. All right, let's tune back into the last few minutes of this game. It is... Um, it has been an interesting affair. Um, wow. Williston absolutely dominating. The Coolies coming back. I think they levelled it, did they? And get their nose in front. Uh, and now Williston has just work. said, no, they put their foot, foot down and said, no, nah, it's, it's not happening, fellas. We've got this. Yeah, they can just take time off the clock here. There's only a couple of minutes left. And, uh, yeah, they really ground down when they needed to. That's a booming long kick. Huge kick. Great mark. There's Hallows, yeah, he's been really solid all day. Big body, hard to defend that. So we're looking at, what is that, 13 points? How's my maths, Joe? 13 points. Yeah, so three on. kicks. It's going to be pretty hard if we're going down yeah. to the last couple of minutes. All the good oh, players are getting involved in the last uh, couple of minutes. This guy's been outstanding. Uh, BOG for mine. Kicks it to his captain, who's also been really good. I think the Williton boys are feeling far more confident out there now. They might be feeling that win in their bones. Certainly uh, based on the way that a call just celebrated that um, last that last goal, putting them three kicks in front. And let's hope that uh, the Perth Footy Live um, camera team or editing team uh, makes a little snippet of that amazing celebratory <laughs> dance and pops it up on the um, page for all of us to enjoy. Yeah, that could go viral, that one. That absolutely could. Oh, then the ball is nearly in a cool's hands again. Cool, Benny, a one last roll of the dice here. Oh, he's just spun around, gathered at one arm, spun around. Yeah, Brendan He knows Tant. he's run a little too fast, so he's tried to plonk it on the um, grass. But Gets just shunted out of the way by Trent Fleming. Great use of the body. Gets oh, it to Aquino, go. gets the hand pass out. Jeez, Elijah Gardy. on his boot, but no, it has ended up in the hand. Ah, oh, buckle. Ah, ah, oh. Liam Arbuckle, he's been threatening in the second half and uh, that is the nail in the coffin. Yeah, we call it. The girls game. next to us have gone crazy. That's going to be hard they've to called, come back They've called that. it time, yeah. That's oh, and here we go, a call's going off again, mate. We just need a highlights of a call's best celebrations. 
That needs to go up on the Facebook page. Hope your editing boys are listening to that. All right. Is this going to be our last bounce and a bounce down of the game, do we think? Yeah. This is pretty special, hey. Like, look, the Coolies have had a phenomenal run, an absolutely dominating run. And we are finally seeing Williton or another team challenge um, and break that domination. But also for Williton, potentially their very first Premiership in the integrated competition. One last roll of dice. That's Lindsay. Kicks it to Alex Seymour, oh. who was lively. Unfortunately, just hit his chest. Wasn't able to take it into his Worthington arms. again with another clearing play. Just look at the way he holds that ball, hey. That's, co that's confidence. He's a lovely little ball user. Damien Rigger, nice kick. Took a couple of steps, just sent it. There Fairly couldn't be decent long to play. There couldn't be long to play now. I am looking forward. Yeah. There we go. Oh, look at those boys celebrating. That's what I was saying. I was looking. I'm looking forward to seeing these boys celebrate. And they are celebrating. Get that footage of this boy in the centre. Yes, of course. He's got all the moves, that's for sure. And he had some pretty good moves with regards to getting the ball and uh, helping his teammates out. But yeah, That is wonderful. Great wow. run from Cool Billiard. They made a great game of that. They, they probably did. could have put the cue in the rack at half time. But uh, they showed a lot of courage. I think they may have even got the lead early in that last quarter, which yeah, is a they huge get effort. One point? Maybe just put so much effort into getting the lead back that they just couldn't hold off Williton with their yeah. late surge. So... Well done, Williton. Uh, I think they probably had the best players around the ground on the day and well deserved that victory. But I'm sure Kulbenia will be back bigger and better next year. Yeah, well, it may just need, uh, may just be the kind of um, kick up the pants that they need to decide that they actually want to retain that premiership for even longer next year, may, uh, next um, season. Perhaps they're going to go f try down the track for longer than a seven-peat. Maybe they're going to go for an eight-peat. Um, next chance they get. Just some goal kickers that I've got. I had yep. Liam Arbuckle with one, Tyson Worthington with one, uh, Jeffrey Stewart with one, Caleb Heron with one, Aaron Richards with one, and Daniel Donegan for one. So there you six goal kickers for Williton. For Cool Binia, I think I got this right. Alex Seymour with two. Really good second half by him. Lindsay Ashworth with one, and Boyd Duffield with one so hope i got all them apologies if i made a mistake that is that. out yeah you've been an outstanding stat stat statistician <laughs> for today's game thank you joe as well as a commentating a commentary uh buddy have much appreciated you being um on the panel with me today yeah. um what a wonderful uh game event to be a part of and um what a wonderful win from williton yeah, to the, to the victor go the spoils, don't they? It is a hard game. A lot, I've been on the losing end of a few grand finals myself, and it's not a great feeling, but to, to risk everything and get the win, uh, you can see how happy and how much this is going to mean for Williton oh, and the Williton sure. crew. And, I, you know, I really don't think that the Coolies, like Coolbinia, can hold their head high because I would say that a lot of people um, scratched them out of the game at half time and they had an amazing comeback in the third quarter and still you know pushed pushed during that first part of the fourth quarter they made it a wonderful competition a wonderful challenge for neutrals like ourselves to watch so certainly um, a lot of positive ta positive takeaways for Kulbinia too but at this point in time it is Williton's moment it is that local footy clubs premiership moment for their integrated team and congratulations to them. It was a wonderful game to watch, a wonderful effort from all of those boys, and some pretty outstanding celebratory dances from a core as well. And like I said, I hope to see that a uh, highlights reel of that on the um, Perth Football League Facebook page. But do you think we should call it for now, Joe, and leave the stream on to watch the presentations and yeah, we'll let people I, enjoy their, their celebrations? Yeah, I think everyone's probably just watching Williton, uh, the great club, uh, singing the Premiership song and uh, we'll tune in to the, to the uh, announcements of the 
the Premiership yep. and the best player. And Absolutely. I've got a few ideas around who I think that might be, but I, I probably don't want to curse that and make a fool of myself <laughs> on TV. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think he might be uh, a Willerton player. And uh, yeah, it's going. Who, who are you thinking, Ashworth? No, uh, not Ashworth. Yeah. Who are we thinking? No, Worthington. Worthington? Yeah, that's who I'd have my money on. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking Ashworth. It was a W, w name. Worthington yeah, no, is the boy yeah. that we're thinking might. Might get up, but we'll have to wait and see. There great players on both sides oh, all around sure. the ground. And I think, above all else, I think integrated footy was the big winner today. The winner on so, the day. Yeah. Footy is always the winner on the day. Um, thank you so much uh, to everyone tuning into our commentary today. Thank you again, Joe, for your company. We're just going to sign out from um, the commentary, but we will continue to um, live stream the celebrations and the presentation ceremony. Um, and we're going to allow everyone out there to take their full moment to enjoy the celebratory um, win of Williton Integrated Football Team. Thank you so much and we will see you next time.
Dr. Tony Bird, the Minister of Sport, thank you for coming out to the Lord today, Grand Finals. It is a great pleasure to announce that today's best player and the selected by the umpires is from the Lords of Club, number 12, Tyson Bird. Ben Armstrong. Yeah. Number five, Ben 